Welcome everyone to another Facebook Live with the Open Arms Lactation Peer Support Peer Counselors. I'm Mary and I'm joined here with Siobhan. Hello. And Elizabeth will be joining us next week um, on the 16th. Um, so this week's topic is supporting the lactation journey everywhere. And um, technically since COVID is around, <laughs> COVID is in full effect. Um, we should be staying home and limiting our um, exposure and access to various bubbles of people. So there's that, but also the reality is it's the holidays for some folks um, and we've been under quarantine for the mm -hmm. most part for 2020. So sometimes we just wanna see our people and we've already established like pod families. Um, you know, so the reality is some of us do get together with and travel for the holidays. So mm -hmm. um, this is what we're addressing this week, um, how to plan for the holidays or just traveling while you're nursing. Um, and this totally applies even beyond the holidays. You know, if you are choosing to stay home this holiday season, um, you know, but you have plans coming up in the spring or, um, you know, really just anytime you're, you're traveling while nursing or lactating, these, these tips can apply. They do. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Um, so we were talking and, and usually the the primary parent is the lactating parent. Um, and it was so, in, in our cultures, right? In our culture, yeah. yeah. Um, and so the primary parent is off doing kind of all the things, um, you know, getting things ready around the house, preparing meals, um, decorating, <laughs> sometimes taking care of the, the other children if there are any. So that can kind of throw um the schedule off balance especially during um holidays or big events throughout the year um so how do we how do we navigate that how yeah. how can we um successfully nurse and handle all the things that we handle wow so i I say plan ahead if you can and advocate for yourself. So those are um, two main things that I think about. Um, so planning ahead, if you can make a schedule, um, if you can um, prepare things in advance. So the mm -hmm. day of a big event, you're not um, running around doing everything, um, preparing in advance, um, letting people know your boundaries and your schedule, like this is what works. These are the times that I will need to step away because my baby is, it's it, my baby's nursing. Um, what else? Um, yeah, I think that like planning ahead is a really good point. Um, I'm, so I am not a planner. Uh, in, in my house, I tend to do things like, last minute right before you know the event or you know if I'm cooking a big meal I'm like okay the meal is in 12 hours I need to get started um but when nursing it's you know you definitely do need to think ahead um and so you know maybe if you're cooking for example and you have dishes that can be made ahead or prepared ahead and then frozen or um, put in containers so you can just throw it all together when it's time um, or the day of the event um, because as we know babies as much as we want to schedule um, babies have their own schedules and agendas oftentimes and so you may plan out that day like okay I'm going to you know cook for two hours and then I'm going to nurse and then but baby may decide that um, it's time for a growth spurt. And so they are going to be cluster feeding or, you know, maybe they had a, a night where they didn't sleep very well. And so they're just needing um, a little bit more love and attention that day. Um, so I think that's a great idea to like, even plan that week out ahead, you know, like what can I do in little bits throughout the week prior or however much time you need prior to make the event 
the event day um, as smooth as possible. Yeah, and I think um, also advocating for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. um, because as a primary parent, you, and if you're the lactating parent, um, you just are used to doing all of it. And then sometimes people default to you doing all of it. So I, I say, I would encourage you to just kind of let other people do things for you, kind of surrender some of the things. Um, a, a good friend told me a long time ago when my children were still young, um, when I was running around just kind of going crazy, they said, do you want it done or do you want it done your way? And then at the moment I was like, I'm not trying to hear that. But <laughs> After a while, I let it sink in and I'm like, you know, they're right. I will just, I just want it done. So I let other people do it. I let them do it. I let my kids do it. And then later, you know, if I felt like it, I would tweak it. But the point is the majority of the work was kind of done. Um, and so that helped. Um, and I guess too, with with um, planning ahead is if if you pump, if you bottle feed, um, pumping ahead of time, mm -hmm. any, um, you know, any growth for anything, just to have that on hand, having an extra bottle, an extra bottle. Prepared. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and I think these could help if you're single, if you're a single parent or you're, if you're a coupled mm -hmm. parent too, just, having little things. Oh, I see on the chat, Jay Washington said, I'm learning this. Yeah, it's wow. a it's a learning curve. It definitely takes some, some time. Um, Jay, I'm still learning this yeah. and I have adult children, so. <laughs> For sure, same, yeah. It's, um, I'm learning the surrender a little bit. Mm -hmm. like, okay. And then, yeah. <laughs> Um, what else? So I guess as for support systems, if you are um, supporting someone that's lactating in their journey, um, you know, if you have people coming over to your home, creating a comfortable and quiet space for them to go off and to nurse the babies, mm -hmm. the baby or the babies, um, you know, setting setting aside that space is really helpful and um you know like stepping in and and offering help if to watch the children if there's other children um you know just lending a helping hand mm -hmm. in my journey what about you siobhan what um what has helped you in your journey well i am definitely not a modest nurser and so <laughs> like and and fortunately for me, my kids um, were very serious about their food, and so distractions weren't um, too big of an issue. So I, I didn't necessarily um, require um, additional space or private space. But um, for me, what was really helpful is just you know having someone bring me water or you know a little snack while i'm nursing um or even just keeping me company if i did choose to go into another room you yeah. know um i i i'm very social with my my people you know or that are my close loved ones and so i you know, I hate being separated from the group. And so if my partner joined me um, or, um, you know, just a family member, a friend that, you know, whoever's home I was in, um, I always, that, that was always something that was nice for me. Yeah. I love that. I love, and how normalizing breast or lactation, right? Normalizing nursing. It's not, it's not, always something yes just that let me not go further <laughs> well yeah i mean it's i mean and, and everyone has their own um comfort levels right and and so sometimes you may be comfortable with nursing whenever wherever however but maybe there's some folks in the space that aren't comfortable with it and 
you may be choosing that time, you know, you, maybe that time isn't the best time for you to, you know, do a sit in <laughs> or a feed in, you know what I mean? Like yeah. <laughs> sometimes just to keep the peace, we do just go in the other room to nurse or, you know, find a, a private corner. Um, so Jay said, um, handing, handing them the, the remote is a, <laughs> like while nursing is a helpful, yes, Jay, I'm with you. That, yeah. <laughs> And just being that person, like, what do you need right now to make this, you know, as comfortable for you? Yeah. Um, oh, yes, Elizabeth. Right. Like, we, you know, we shouldn't. Um, Elizabeth commented and said, nursing a baby shouldn't mean folks have to be isolated. Um, yeah, I'm 100% yeah. there. I, you know. Isolate it or have privacy if you want, mm -hmm. um, but it's also really, yeah. I like being around other folks, especially during the holidays, right? That's true. Yeah. Yeah. My FOMO, I'm remembering now, my FOMO would kind of get set off like, yeah, being out there. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. You're laughing or, yeah. Um, another thing that I have found helpful um, is, and I know we've talked about this in previous lives, but um, layers, yeah. wearing clothes that are comfortable for you. Um, so oftentimes, at least, um, I don't know how it is in, in your family, Mary, or in your culture, but um, we get dressed up in my culture for like family get togethers and holidays oftentimes. And so, um, you know, when you're wearing your cute you know, your cute little outfit is not always nursing friendly. Yeah. Um, but just finding a way to have that nursing friendly outfit and still be cute can be really, mm -hmm. that could, that could be a game changer. <laughs> so I became really fond of like open, um, open front sweaters, um, t uh, nursing tanks, you know, so I had those layers underneath my top that I was wearing. Yeah, those are great. Yeah, those are great. And we talked about like shawls mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and this is the perfect time of the year for shawls too. It is, yeah. Because it's cold outside, but inside. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Just something lightweight, but still, you know, got that little mm -hmm. holiday flair. Yeah, and it just dresses mm -hmm. anything up, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and then what about if you're traveling too? If you just happen to be traveling maybe across the state or you know, like an hour or two away, um, what has what are some of the tricks that you have used when you were nursing, Siobhan? Yeah. Um, the biggest thing for me was traveling in the evening after bedtime. Um, I and I know that doesn't work for everyone, but I am um, Oh, I was just reading Elizabeth, your comments, um, button fronts and wrap top and dresses. Yes, wrap tops and mm -hmm. uh, was, yeah. the wrap dresses are, um, I didn't even think about that. Those are, and they're cute. Yeah. Um, that's a great idea. Um, yeah, so I, I like, I'm a red eye person when I'm traveling with little ones. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even, you know, when driving, you know, across state, if you are able to nurse baby, put them in the car seat and then go, hopefully the motion of the car can help, you know, lull them to sleep and keep them asleep for a, a period of time. Um, yeah, that still works for me. I don't know, I guess that's the technique my parents used or my mom used, because that still works for me. Yeah. For whatever reason, yeah. Yeah, for a multitude of reasons, right? But like, yeah, I so. Another thing is, you know, um, and we were talking about this earlier is um, window seats. You know, if you're flying, um, I know a lot of folks, you know, prefer aisle seats for ease of, of access to your bathroom or, or what have you. Um, when you're traveling with a baby, having a window seat can be nice because it minimizes distractions um, as well as, um, you know, provide some privacy and discretion. Mm -hmm. 
I also like to sit in the back of the plane when I have little ones because uh, it is closer to the bathroom. It, there are less, you know, less folks walking up and down past the aisle. Mm -hmm. And you can get up and walk around and mm -hmm. comfort your, your, your child if you need to. Yes, um, and you know, if baby cries, of course, there's yeah. people around to feel frustrated with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And even then, too, it's like, um, you know, I know that as parents, we understand and we get it. So maybe if you are on a plane and then you do have families there with, with younger children or nursing children, just like, you know, um, just giving them maybe that nod or acknowledgement mm -hmm. or extra hand <laughs> if you feel so inclined. I mean, that goes a long way. Like that. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and if you do, if you are traveling, um, what are some things that you have used in the past? Like some things that you've brought, like um, if you're pumping, maybe actually, did you pump? I don't know if you, you exclusively breastfed. I, yes. And I did pump. Um, mm -hmm with my firstborn, but I wasn't going anywhere. Like we were pretty, <laughs> I mean, like the furthest, we lived in Tacoma. The furthest we went was Everett. Yeah. Really a travel. Um, so no, but um, I, I mean, I guess like for those times that we did go to Everett or, you know, drove a couple hours away, um, even if I wasn't pumping, having supplies with me was helpful. Having a change of, you know, nursing pads and my nipple creams and, um, you know, burp cloths. Mm -hmm. You know, like, and and I think those can, you know, either way, having those with you, whether you're pumping or whether you're nursing at the um, at the chest, um, those are all things that we can. A change of clothes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> our nursing pads fail us and you know maybe we need to change our shirt so packing ahead too yeah and in any in any event i would always bring extra things for the for the babies but i'd forget for myself because i'm like you know you just yeah you just kind of forget to pack for yourself so i yeah. <laughs> stuffing um I'd forget the the um, the nursing pads. <laughs> so I'd be like, oh, here we go. Maybe put some um, napkins. <laughs> I mean, work with what you yeah. know. Right? <laughs> We're all used to <laughs> doing that. Um, that's those are great ideas. Like just packing for yourself in the bag. Yeah, in the diaper bag. Um, yeah. So those are all great ideas for supporting. The lactation journey just when you're traveling or you know any any amount of distance um oh another thing too like if you are traveling um and you happen to be staying in a hotel or a motel um check and see if they have the mini fridge or freezer um and a microwave if you especially if you're pumping right you know you need a place to store the milk um the microwave is a great uh, place to sanitize. If you have the microwave sanitizing bags, you can sanitize your pump parts there. Um, I think too, having, um, no matter how far away from the house you're going, if it's to a doctor's appointment or, you know, up the street to a friend's house or across the country, having um, like a Ziploc bag to put your, uh, the pump parts that you've used or the, um, the bottles that have been used, you know, put them in the Ziploc bag after wiping them out with a, a wipe mm -hmm. uh, that way and having extras with you. So that way you don't have to worry about cleaning and sanitizing while you're on the go. Um, but you can still, you know, do what you need to do. Yeah, just a little prep work can take a long, take you a long way. Yeah, yeah. Having, um, making sure you have your AC adapter for your car, for your pump. Um, or a battery, a charged battery pack can also be, a, you know, a lifesaver. <laughs> yes, those are super point. Those are super great points. Um, 
Yeah, so just preparing ahead of time. Um, and I think, I mean, I'm not the greatest planner either, <laughs> but just like, I feel like even the night before, just that mad rush and then just, you know, any any little prep work ahead of time can help you. Um, and then if making lists help you out, cause I'm a little squirrely, so I need to have things written down, otherwise I'll forget it. Um, so yeah, planning ahead, advocating for yourself, um, letting your partners or your support people know, you know, what you might need, admitting to yourself <laughs> that you, um, that that's okay and, yeah. and rendering a little. I know that, um, I know that I still have a hard time with that, but I'm learning. Yeah, you're saying surrender. I'm like, what's that? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Um, I th <laughs> yeah, I think for me, like just, I was a stay-at-home mom for so many years that you too, right? So it's yeah, like, yeah. you're just used to just taking care of everything. And so um, it's really nice when folks around step in and say, I got this. Yeah. Sit down, take a breath, you know, it's okay. Um, and really like trusting that, you know, like, okay, you know what? I, I do need to sit down. I do need to take care of myself. I do need to feed the baby mm -hmm. um, or just breathe. <laughs> just breathe is a great one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Take that breath and that pause and be like, it, it's fine. Everything will turn, it, things usually turn out fine. <laughs> right. I mean, like people, I don't know. I don't, I don't go to holiday get togethers or, or, you know, group get togethers uh, for the food. I, I do it for the people, right? And so if a dish doesn't get made or somebody makes it a little differently than I do, like that's okay, mm -hmm. you know? Like that's gonna, it's, it's gonna be all right because I'm still with the people that I care about and that I love and, and that's really the most important part. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Very seldom do people remember like, oh, they forgot this. They just remember the memories and all mm -hmm. the good times, yeah, so, yeah. so keeping that in mind is good. Um, oh, memory, hi memory. Uh, mm -hmm. Memory said, when I was traveling, it was really helpful to, to still have a breastfeeding cover or a car plug for the pump, clean water to rinse out the equipment. Oh yes. And when I was done pumping and a cooler to keep my breast milk chill when away from my baby, my baby was with me. I stopped every two hours to breastfeed and change and nourish myself. Oh, that's important. Um, mm -hmm when I was specifically driving, those are all important. And and reminds me, um, my friend would have um, bottles of water in the car just for those occasions. And she had younger children too. So any yeah. any other type of need for that. Um, thanks, Memory. Thank you, yeah. And um, that also reminds me, I've seen folks like have the, um, uh, for nursing or pumping in the car, they have the like window covers. And I, uh, I have seen like that. Maybe Elizabeth also talked about that previously. Um, but I think that's also like, if you're, you know, feeling like, hey, a little extra privacy would be helpful. You know, mm -hmm. having those window covers um, might be something worth looking into. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so with that said, I think, um, I think yeah if yeah. there's any um questions that you have please pop them into the chat and then we'll we'll get them answered and otherwise we will be back um on december 16th and it's escaping me what we're going to be talking about um yeah, <laughs> <laughs> <I'm holiday stuff. laughs> yeah. Um, but we'll see you there um until then, have a great rest of your week and take care, everyone. Yeah, take care. See you on the 16th. <laughs>